full dead tiger with its skin, bones, and everything intact might sell for $50,000 on the black market. Ivory tusks on the wall or carving them into very expensive figurines, sometimes up to $300,000 for one figurine. One rhino horn might sell for $65,000 per kilo, which is more now than people are getting for cocaine. I'm Steve Gelster. I'm an American and I run an organization called Freeland, which is a counter-trafficking organization. We're trying to protect vulnerable animals and people from trafficking syndicates. We hunt the traffickers. The illegal wildlife trade, it's much bigger than people realize. It's probably 20 billion US dollars or more a year. Wildlife trade is driven not fully, but largely by a belief that some of these things can help cure ailments. For example, uh, rhino horn is thought to believe that it can reduce fevers or maybe even be added to a chemotherapy treatment to help with cancer. But it's a very expensive aspirin. Uh, tiger bone might be used for rheumatism or maybe to increase somebody's power, maybe even sexual power. Bears are used largely for their gallbladders. People will actually milk them for certain medicines, sometimes even while the bear is alive. A large part of the trait is um, ornaments, trophies, so sticking a, a lion head on the wall. I think people can be the kindest species in the world, but when they've lost touch with nature, they become maybe the most insensitive. Industry is driven by the same thing that drives drug trafficking or human trafficking. These are organized crime groups. These are mass serial murders, basically. There's one, for example, probably one of the biggest wildlife trafficking syndicates in the world. We call it Hydra. They've got suppliers and sourcing agents in Mozambique, South Africa, probably moving into South America now. They're having a very good life, I mean, because they don't have much of a conscience. We watch them and we see that they're buying lots of nice things for their families, cars houses. This is like, it's like something out of a movie like that. I'm thanking them for helping us today as we try to fight wildlife traffickers together. I personally and our organization, we are trying to destroy, dismantle trafficking syndicates. And we do that through training, providing information, cheerleading for good officers, getting them technology trying to bring them up to the same level as the organized crime. It's a combination of frontline action, getting right out there, finding out which officers care about this. If they want a case, we help them. Here's an example of a seizure of hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of wildlife being smuggled there. Typically, the officers have their picture taken, but we won't find out who is behind it. So what we've been doing more lately is getting the arrest officers to grab the phones. Those phones tell a big story. Here's another example. In this case, because they seized the phones of the guys with it, we were able to find out pictures in the phone of the poachers, who they were calling, and we were able to illuminate the supply chain all the way back into Vietnam. What you really want to find out is who's controlling the bank account, who's paying. We've had a couple of uh, breakthroughs, like with this Hydra syndicate. We exposed the kingpin. We got him arrested. They would have never thought anybody would dare do that. And, and we're doing it. The biggest thing to remember is we're going through the fastest rate of species loss ever in history right now. 100 years ago, there were probably at least 100,000 tigers across their range in Asia. Today, we're talking about maybe three and a half thousand. So almost a 97% reduction. Elephants, there used to be millions. Now there's just hundreds of thousands. About 10 to 12 being killed every day. It's insane. I mean, this is like science fiction, but you know, the, the reality is that it's probably worse than what we know. And so we really need to wake up because these animals are not just precious, they're important. Each of them plays a really important role. Elephants plant entire forests through their dung. Tigers, they're literally the king of the forest. They regulate the ecosystem. If you protect a tiger, you've protected an entire forest. We need to 
reverse the decline of the species loss. When we catch the criminals, I don't really enjoy seeing anybody go to jail or prison. I feel like caging people up, like they're caging animals, doesn't really solve the problem. I think what solves it is getting their money, making them pay, making sure they don't do it, anything, it again, but yeah. It's been very enjoyable, very gratifying when we've helped stop killers. Mm -hmm.